see. Welcome everyone. Thank you dearly. Thank you very much for participating. And also coming through it again. We are going to reflect the teaching of our gracious teacher, Buddha Shakyamuni, and all the great masters, or great practitioners, really activated this teaching throughout the centuries and throughout the generations. Today we are again following their footsteps, activating that, that's what they did, and kind of restrengthening re our courage and the commitment and the confidence in the Dharma with the joy and the appreciation. Therefore, this is one of the, again, beautiful moments in our lives. Life is precious. Life is fragile. Life is also, in, in one way, in short times. But to make some meaning for in this life, this time, in these circumstances, is really wonderful. It's not just the only way of taking it, kind of making wonderful, beautiful things. For our own kind of small goal, or kind of like secluded, a secluded situation. But we are combining the gracious teachers, teacher, the Buddha Shakyamuni's teaching, both each other, thinking of all living beings. According to our best capabilities, we are kind of lined up to that direction. Truly, it is wonderful. It's beautiful. Because it is, it is kindness, it is compassion, it is respect and appreciation to everyone. I like to bring the peace and harmonious. Locally and largely. And all the beings beyond the boundaries. Truly, that is so spirit, so good. There is no single, single living beings don't like the happiness and peace. And they appreciate it. We are lining up toward, toward that direction. And we practice. Therefore, it is so special, so wonderful. Again, for those reasons, always in the teaching said, activated the motivations. Activated the motivations. This is not just a casual talk. Kind of like just a saying. It is really touching to the nugget, to do, to the root. Every our activities, our actions, are all start with the mind, motivation. There's no single one activities that is not really started with the mind, unless something is kind of drunk or intoxicated or out of mind, then maybe that. But otherwise, every action what we do, it is activated, accelerated, fueled up by the our this invisible mind or monkey mind. It is. Therefore, to correct him, to activate him is the, the most important when we practice the Dharma. In that what all Buddha said and every master says. So motivation is so important. And what in the teaching said, and you all know, I'm reminded actually, you all know this. It's not something that I'm talking new things that we never heard, or you never heard. <laughs> if mind is good, activity will be good. That means mind is virtuous, the activity will be virtuous. And oh, oh mind, if his mind is good, activity will be positive. If mind is bad, no matter how it appears, it is bad. There is no two different ways to go. It's all dependent within our mind. Therefore, in the teaching always, activate the motivation of the good. It is also what we activated the good. Because we have so many minds. There is not just one or two minds. There's so many conceptions aligned up to the in, in a invisible status to activate it. And we turn that all invisible act, those mind mental activity lined up in our uh, our mental invisible status, and we direct that in the good positive, then all turn in the good. And no one is directed that. Do good mind, do bad mind. No one except one's own son. Therefore, 
good motivation is the key. What we like to get, that is all. It is really like completely dependent upon that. So therefore, activate the good motivations. And that good motivation is as you all know. And we said, and I said, and you all know, I mean, this is again, joy appreciations. Remote joy, more appreciation. Even in a life we have difficulty, this and that things. But there's so many reasons to be, to be happy in the job. And plus we have this beautiful life, beautiful endowments, or 18 endowments, with all luxury qualities. Activate that with gratitude, graceful, graceful, gratitude. Activate that. That, when we do that, that is dharma. That is not just a dharma, that is the heart foundation dharma, the essential of dharma, joy and appreciation. To ourselves, joy and appreciation of the situation and the circumstance that we are surrounded. And then that joy and appreciation is not just only kind of only ourselves joy, but that to kind of activate that joy and swing in that to the far beyond of our really even capabilities of the physically or verbally, then bodhicca. Bodhicca, bring more joy, bodhicca attitude. The material I'm going to reflect the teaching of the great teacher Buddha Shakyamuni and lineage masters. May that become the one of the great cause to bring the joy and the peace, happiness for all living beings and remove their suffering, the difficulties, the cause of suffering, the difficulty from ever. Really wishing that strongly with the courage and commitment, confidence, kind of like fearlessness that this without any blockage of this kind of like strange or kind of limited boundaries. Really wish that. That is known as bodhicitta. You all know that. And then in the, net, in the teaching always says, also see the pure status of the every way things are. According to the Buddha teaching and according to all the great masters, and nature is so pure, perfect. And all the doubts are known as the three Vajra status. And which you so many Many people, we all are very young practicing. We know that. When we do the visualization, we have to see ourselves as the Buddha. We see the sound as the I, sound of the Buddha, the voice of the enlightenment. Whole mandala is like Buddha status. Bring up that realization. That is not just pretending to be, which is reality. It is that state according to the teaching. We don't see that now because of cataracts of the duality. Fabrication, we don't see. But when we remove the cataracts of duality by our practices, that realization is right here. And for that reason, great master, his own Dunyurum will say, one of his last teachings, he said, said that the beautiful pure land, the beautiful, lovely pure land is right with you. And we purify our dualities. He really said in his teachings, this was his dreams. That I think many of you maybe read that booklet, which is translated. And what in the teaching said, in the Tibetans. If you really like to have the discover the cover the pure land. Purify our dualities. If you purify our duality, the beautiful, lovely, comfortable, pure land is right with him or right with you. And that teaching said, and I'm just translating roughly that, but you can, they translated this teaching, translated, you can look at that. That is really, that's it. I mean, it's everything, the purity status. See, so bring up that also at least to open that door toward that direction is so important. We do thought and then we reflect the teaching. This teaching is of course we've been uh, we've been kind of continuing this spring. Spring. This spring we had great opportunity to reconnect back to the teaching of the greatest teacher of his own this is Dujurumachi, and we went through this. I mean his own Dujurumachi give variety of teachings that recovers entirely Buddha teaching or Nayana teachings, entirely Buddha teaching, they want his teaching 
in all the way Vajrayana teaching, in all the way Dzogchi Ati Yoga teachings, but we went this teaching, which is translated here. Here, what is said here. Here, you all know. The heart, heart advice for the 14th ones by his own Dujan Heart advice for the 14th ones. This is one of his kind of condensed, simple, direct, repeat and talking teachings. And it is, it is so simple, kind of so short. Particularly, this is really teaching, what I'm saying, Pete and Satoshi, because those people who really like to put in practice, into practices. And it's a very beautiful instruction that contains the essence of the meaning of the Buddha teachings, or the teaching of the entire life, all those great master teachings here. How to practice, how to activate them, how to bring realization, not just the intellectual status. Not kind of, kind of just like kind of talking, but observing the teaching into the heart and bring the realization as Buddha did, as Guru Pema Sambhava, all those great masters achieved, and his own Dunyurma himself. That's what they follow that. That's what that's why he said heart advice. From his heart, his realization, what he practiced, what he meditated, and what he actualized. He is sharing that to for those who are fortunate practitioners. We are all fortunate practitioners. According to the teaching of the Buddha Dharma, generally obtaining the 18 qualities of the human lives is so precious. With that, distinctly the mind of the soul, some really interested in the joy and the devotion to the Dharma is so special. So the, our physical luxury is, is we have the luxury of the physical, of the eating endowment. We have luxuries of the mental state of the also joy and the devotion to the Dharma. So that means our body is fortunate, our mind is fortunate, if I use that word. How lucky we are. This lucky and this fortunate is not just came by accidentally or itself. Truly, we earn that, our past deed, according to Buddhism. There's a nothing is happening without a cause and effect, without cause and condition. If you see the good result, that tells there is good cause and good conditions, supported to bring that growth. So Buddhism in our life, our situation is quite good. That means we did good. But that's not enough. We have to climb it up. We have to fly widely and continue to move. We have to add once. Add once for ourselves, add once for all the beings. That is our commitment. What kind of commitment maybe you think? Both each other. Believe many of you, we all got the Bodhicitta vow, not just a refuge vow, we receive the Bodhicitta vow eagerly. Eagerly. Bodhicitta vow is and it's not just a kind of like symbolic, kind of like merely ceremonial things. It is really we are making commitment. Commitment to ourselves that we're never going to fail down our compassion, our loving kindness, our thought and courage and commitment in order to benefit one's own self, in order to benefit all the living beings. We made that commitment. We said when we take Bodhijata vows, what do we say? We are today, now on, until I reach the enlightenment and all the sentient beings are freed from the sufferings, I will follow you, exactly you Buddhas in the Bodhisattva of death. I will do everything what you did. That we said clearly with our mind, without disturbed by mind or mind or some degree really of the chemicals or toxicated or pressured by someone, voluntarily, openly, joyfully, we said that we today we follow your footsteps. That is Bodhicitta. Precious Bodhicitta. It's again, it's bodhicitta, it's not something strange, anything, really activating our compassion, our goodness, our loving kindness, 
that combined commitment and courage. We did. So therefore, it's already a wonderful situation, a wonderful things. And for those reasons, we are fortunate ones. In this teaching, again, we went this last time. So I won't go, I mean, I'm going today where we stopped last time. We went through this. This, until this first line, from first line, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, six lines. We went to the six lines. We went to this, like, trusted that the three jewels are the infallible source of Rafa. We went through the kind of little bit details of the meaning of the Rafa. Details of the Buddha, Buddha or the object of Rafa. Details, little bit detail of the about the Buddha, let it detail of the Dharma, let it detail of the Sanghas. When we talk the Rafuji, again, in Mahayana teaching, when we take Rafuji, even taking Rafuji is best of compassion. Taking all living beings, they are, I like to help to every being, everyone, and therefore I'm going to take Rafuji. So this is best of Bodhijata. So then the sense Bodhijata is so important, we went, uh, then Bodhijata. After Rafuj, we went to Bodhijata. When you come to the Bodhijata, Bodhijata can be, not can be, it's divided into two. Wishing Bodhijata and actualizing Bodhijata. We went those quite thoroughly of each of those. When you come to the actualizing Bodhijata, then what is that? Then that is six paramatas. We went six paramatas. All those six paramatas, again, quite kind of thoroughly, and of course there's many things to say there, but quite thoroughly of those six paramatas. Again, the six paramata is wishing bodhicitta is the essence of the wishing bodhicitta is the poor boundless, as you all know. That is boundless. Love, boundless compassion, boundless joy, and boundless equanimity. And that means love, compassion, joy or rejoice, and equanimity. Those are the four boundless. How do that practice this? That is, um, I think many of you already know, that the first boundless joy. May all living be beings have the happiness and the cause of happiness. And that is loving kindness, boundless love. And the second is, may all living beings free from suffering, cause of sufferings. That is boundless compassion. And then, third one, boneless rejoice of joy. May all living beings are never separated from the supreme joy, which is without the sufferings. That is simple, rejoice of joy. May every living being have the great realization of equanimity, both attachment to the close ones, rejection to the others. Others. And that is great equanimity. Those are in the teaching mentioned in a particular great master, Nunchiba said, is the essence of the wishing bodhicitta. Essence. So, and when we have the time, even we can join, even if you're not on the kind of like on your meditation cushion spirit, if you join those really prayers, reflecting the meaning to those words is so powerful, so special. It's so powerful, accumulating the merit and purifying our obscurations. Really casually, kind of so simple, kind of like very quietly, just reflecting. Really, may all living beings have happiness and cause of happiness. That means may all living beings have also peace and cause of peace. May all living beings have the harmony and cause of harmonies. Have you? That we chant that. That is not pretending practices. According to Buddhism, that is heart of the practices. Also, so speak, it has no kind of like stains of the grass or ego cleanliness, self importance. No self importance, self centered mind. It's may all living beings have the happiness and the cause of happiness. May all living beings have peace and cause of peace. May all living beings have the harmony and cause of harmonies. Uttering that prayers wisely, 
cause and the result. And when you have the cause for that, that result lasts long term, or the fruit lasts long term. So we pray in that. So far, and that is the essence of the wishing body temple. In any teaching, say what this many how you exercise, train your mind of the wishing body temple. Do that. It is so powerful, as I say. In the teaching, Buddha teaching, really, it instantly purifies obscuration, negativities. It brings the instant light in the in the, our mind and heart. And then when we that happens, it will bring us to joy and peace, happiness, what we what we chanting, it really will bring to us. I mean, this is not just a making story, fairy tale, mythology. You can witness it to yourself. Or we can witness it ourselves. If we chant that, stay our mind to that state and chant those prayers, you see what change comes. And that means we're changing all those cells of the blood, breathing, the whole circle, the entirely mandala or the galaxy of the body is really transforming. It's so healing, powerful healing purpose is true. Different healings, all the emotions, negativities, those are like kind of like infant, those emotions, whatever the residues are left, it will heal. We don't like to stay that shadow in that darkness forever. We don't like to leave this body with that shadow in the darkness. We have to clean, purify that. That is known as in Buddhism, practicing Dharma. That is dharma. Those are the essential dharma. The central of dharmas. Dharma. Then with this thought, now I'd like to help to all the sentient beings. I'd like to help to sentient beings. With that, that attitude, that, that attitude. Not with the ego clinging. We did not, not with the self-important. But like to help to the other beings. Then, the six paramatas. We went those six paramatas. Six paramatas, again I listed, listed that, and we quote, we all know. Generosity paramatas, morality paramatas, patience paramatas, and then joyful, joyful effort to the virtues paramatas, concentration paramatas, and then Panya Paramata or the Wisdom Paramatas. Those are known as six Paramatas. All are best and rooted and inseparable with the four boundless. Generous the Paramata is inseparable with the four boundless. Morality Paramata is inseparably with the four boundless. Four boundless is the nutrition of the six paramatas. All four boundless is the vitality of the six paramatas. All that. And then of course there's details and the divisions and all that extended. But all is rooted to the four boundless. Every doing kind of four boundless will be kind of to kind of bring down boiling down, then is compassion. It's compassion. All is based on the compassion. Six Paramada is based absolutely on the compassion. That is what the, all this Bodhicitta, Bodhicitta and Bodhisattva activities. And we went through those. Today we go a little bit on this now. Next one is, is is, uh, what's called, the next line is, and so not, <coughs> so, and, and do not be mistaken about the result of the virtues and unvirtuous actions. Actions. And then as well as here, in particular, devote to the root teachers. Next one is love and affection for the Samaya brothers and sisters. 
and the bodhicitta of the compassion travel to all mother sentient beings and the reduction of the grasping due to the knowledge that all all uh, compounded things are impermanence. And the next one, this is a summary, are known as the poor everlasting wealth of the practitioner and should be regarded as indispensable. So these four or five are so important, they are the wealth of the practitioners. And a great master, his on the Dunyan Mujay, highlighted that. <coughs> Which is not his thing, but just every master in the teaching said, these four or five, what means five? What means five? five. I'm talking about this one too. This, uh, that do not mistake it about the result and virtues and unvirtuous actions. If we count that one, is then it will become five. Five. Every day count as in the teaching listed, all those are five. Four. These four or the five are so important. It's important during the practices, that means during the meditation the practices, and this is important during the post meditation. When you are not meditating particularly, or when we are in a war, war, it is all, always remember this, this four or five. Fifth one is cause and effect that are inevitable. But I, at, the, at the beginning time, this cause and effect that will be in, uh, inevitable, therefore our actions always be thoughtful. Mindful, whatever we do, it has resolved. If we do something, whatever it echoes back, back activities, everything. This is called law of karma in this in the Buddha teaching called law of karma. Karma can be divided actually how on that produced this thing. There's two ways and called mental activities and then physical, verbal activities. So if I say more another way, the mental karma and verbal karma and physical karmas. Karma is an action. So mental action, physical action, verbal action. And this action can be divided in a Buddha teaching three different, three actions. Positive action, negative action, and a neutral actions. And so, positive action, negative action has definitely big result, big consequence. Neutral is a letter, this sense is sort neither positive nor negative, it has less effect, less consequence. But positive and negative are really so always there is consequence behind. Even we didn't see that right that moment, according to Buddhism, it is. And what the, in the teaching says, everything what we experience, what we go through, is karma. It is karma. This is nothing is a happening without the activities. This karma is not somebody overloaded us suddenly or it did come from somewhere else or it just accidentally appeared. Karma is all connected to the, our own actions. Action of the mind, action of the physical, action of the verbal. And the mental actions are the cause of the all to, to those actions, physical, verbal actions. So therefore, we have, we have to be always thought, thoughtful as much as we can. Even for example, any kind of like unwholesome mental activities arising in our mind, not kind of like hovering over that again and again and again and that. Let it go. 
Let it go. If it's going all over, particularly of course, it depends on how that stone is. Something kind of a strong emotions that are like neg negative emotions hovering in the mind, it disturbs all our systems. As I said earlier, a poor boneless thought will bring such a light in the whole of our system of bodies. But this negative thought is the same. It really will bring so many unbeneficial result the whole of our system of the bodies. What they call it? stress force, anxieties, then depressions, then begin to build self blamings, disappointments. All those comes one after another. This all is mostly producing, produced by our mind, one's own mind. Maybe there is some consequence, but if we handle so well, then those are not going to affect to us too much. That's why I call bodhisattvas. Sattva means courageous ones, warriors. Why great teacher Buddha Shakyamuni named warriors? Samsara, there is so many of those difficult troubles so looks like coming from outside. And then we caught with that, and then we become we perish. We become the victim. Victim. But if you're courage and strong and handle that well, without access and going on and on and on and on, on, then you defeat it in a way. Really. Not in the way we are defeating. You're reducing that, then when you have that attitude, you have more skills, more wisdom, more capability to handle things out so, so nicely. Therefore, so many of those great masters, looks like they got so many troubles, one after another, or great practitioners, really one after another. But all that subsided, and they're glowing as a sunshine in the sky, free from the clothes. True, their warriors. That's what called warriors. Never affect their body each other. Never affect their identity. Their qualities. Qualities. So therefore, the, the, therefore, how we handle things is so, really so important, so necessary. Therefore, we're trying to handle things. But at the same time, whatever activity we start happening, we always thought mindfulness, our actions. Karma is what? Well, then again, if we go to the details of this karma, then positive mind, negative minds. Karma is not coming from outside. It's from all produced by our mind. As I said, mental activities. Mental activity reflected to the verbal and the physical, then it becomes the poor bloom, bloom of karma, bloom, or poor growth of the karma. Appeared. And those are positive mind. What can the teaching say? Positive mind is, is uh, a detachment, loving kindness, compassion, Compassion and wisdom, those are the positive mind. Whatever the activity we did with the verbally, we and physically, that is positive karma, positive actions. And the opposite of those what is ignorance, attachment, and anger. Anger or combination with those. What that is produced in the mind, mind. And whatever the activity, that becomes negativities. Negativities. These negativities are then summarized in the Buddha teaching, <coughs> teaching could highlight those ten non-virtues. Ten non-virtues. Those are the, the na naturally negativities. Ten non-virtues. And I'm not going to list that. You all know that. We all know that. Ten Three by the body, three unvirtues by the body, four unvirtues by the verbal, and three by the mental states. Those are known as ten non virtues. Everything is bad. Particularly the three mental states, the last one in the Buddha teaching said that's the very heaviest ones. When mind is bad, it is bad. 
well. So therefore, this last three, the three mind is have to be really very thought that activities. And then positive, ten positives. Opposite of those ten virtues is positives. All the positive, that means these virtues is good. That result will be good. Therefore, following those activities. Above that, those are the ten on virtues common. And above that, if you take the vows according to Buddha teaching, then there's a vows of the such as like Vinaya vows and Bodhisattva vows and uh, Vajrayana vows. Those are then extra addition if we do against with those. And we kind of like completely contradictory with that. Even we talk vows or we receive the teaching, we talk wow openly in the heart kind of with clear mind. If we take that against it, then it becomes negative. And what you do that? Then to purify that, cleaning with that. And such as we do the Hundo practices, for for hours of the Vajrasattva practices. Those are so powerful. With meditation of the Vajrasattva and with the four power as structured in the teaching, it will clean, it will clean, it will purify. And the teaching said that as soon as you see the, some mistakes and that you get a weakness of the, your samayas or all those obscurations, obstacles, immediately trying to purify. Great master in the teaching said, Great master uh, Atija said, said that. What in the teaching said? He said he never uh, 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 he been perfect. I mean, maybe I use this way that uh, he he never had a trouble with the, keeping the vows of the Vinayas, but he had some degrees of the difficulties of the keeping the vows of the Bodhisattva vows. And then in the Vajrayana vows, he has quite a little bit more difficult to keep their vows. That. But he said they never stayed even one night without purif not purifying. So that means it is immediately purified. We can make mistakes. We are some sort of beings. But not just ignoring that and just go doing it again and again. But immediately purify that. He said he never accompanied it or kind of like left it overnight without purifying. This great master said. So this is the really we can do, or even we can do immediately, but as much as we can do, do soon, as soon as possible, it clears away that, we strengthen our practices, practices. So that is the, really about the, uh, about the, uh, this, uh, the first one, so that this is again, this one is the, the, the virtues and the unvirtuous actions, we should always be thoughtful. Whether we are practicing and whether we are in the world. Particularly, of course, in the world we have to be very careful. But during the old practices, as I said, in the, in the Buddha's teachings, there is two kinds of activities. Mental activities and verbal and physical activities. And even during practices, I have some kind of like unwholesome thought and mental state, trying to immediately purify. Notice that and not stay too long. That. And then with those thoughts, whatever activity you did, in a, in a way we not bad meditating practices, definitely purify and also careful with mindfulness steps. So that is really about these first lines. The next one is here, particularly devotion to the teachers. Here. Devotion to the root teachers. That, I mean, you, know, you already know, we heard these teachings always this. And in a Buddha's teaching, teacher is so important. Teacher is particularly known as qualified teacher. It's really so important. This is not just on the, on the Vedana teaching, but also generally in Buddha's teachings. What in the Buddha's teaching is said? This, uh, what is the generally qualification of the teachers? 
There is many different explanations in, in a way to explain by the, in the teaching, in the Vinaya teaching, in the Bodhisattva teaching, in the Vajrayana teaching, and that, but it could simplify maybe I just say, I'm making three times before two, so I won't maybe go over that, but one simplified this, is what the great master Shantideva said in the teaching, said that, uh, that he said two simple qualities. The teacher should have two simple qualities. The always teacher, one who is, knows very well about the meaning of the Mahayana teaching, so that means the Buddha teaching, teaching so that is the wisdom aspect. Wisdom aspect of the know, knowing the Buddha teaching clearly. All the teaching. Second qualification is, and the vows of the Bodhicitta never going to give up even the cost of the lives. Bodhicitta, Bodhicitta, vows of the Bodhicitta, or the contract from Bodhisattvas, never going to give up even the cost of lives. That means it's in Bodhicitta what? Bodhicitta is a loving kindness, compassion, and wisdom. So that teacher must have loving kindness, compassion, wisdom, and courage, and commitment, confidence, and maintaining the Uzzali Buddha teachings. Exactly teaching, as it said, by that teacher, whether she or whether he, that maintain. That teacher is known as spiritual perfect friend. Perfect friend. Teacher are, whether she or he, are the practice your, your friend. Friend. One who is going to influence you. When you're going to support you, influence on the right directions. Therefore it's called spiritual friend, virtuous friend. There is two friends called unvirtuous friends and virtuous friends. Teacher, qualified teacher, is a virtuous friend. Friends. This teacher can be divided. What? In a teaching set. That teacher, no, that teacher can be divided. That teacher, so maybe I should say this one. The teacher can be, there is four different teachers. As mentioned, I think, earlier too. Again, I will list that. Those are ordinary teacher or ordinary perfect teacher, Bodhisattva teacher, Namakaya teacher, and Sambhokaya teacher. So four teachers. Ordinary teacher, Bodhisattva teachers, and then Namakaya teachers, Namakaya Buddha teacher, Sambhokaya Buddha teachers. Four teachers. This ordinary teacher. Teacher is what I said in describing qualification of that. Bodhisattva, Namakaya Buddha, and Sambhokaya Buddha is don't have to exam. It is already qualified. But Sambhokaya, this sorry, ordinary teacher, as Great Master Shanti Deva said, true qualities, who knows all the Buddha teachings who are going to keep the conduct of the Bodhisattva perfectly, never going to give up even the cost of our lives. That is the ordinary teacher. This ordinary is not just a regular ordinary teacher. In some teaching, I saw translated in English. English said, perfect ordinary teacher. So it's perfect, definitely. It's very correct, extraordinary, ordinary no teachers. That teacher has those, those qualities. If you have that quality, that teacher, that quality, that is, that like in the teaching set, you, you, you got the mining of the gold mining. You, know, you have the tre you are right threshold of the gold mine. mine. If you are looking to, to the understanding of the brain, some degree of understanding of the Buddha teaching and the you know, Proving according to the teaching of the Buddha Shakyamuni, that is really excellent. 
For that reason, great city of Buddha here can be said in the body of Paramahansa teachings. The air you like to reach the enlightenment Buddhahood, immediately you contract with the qualified teachers. Teachers. Immediately qualified teachers. This qualified teacher is then in the many teachings says, oh you should should examine the teachers. You should listen carefully, see the contracts, and read the lifestyles, all those things, and then finally you connect to them. Those are the teachings said that you have those people who really like to do those and have time to do, have capabilities. But otherwise, that's one who has this, who knows the Buddha teaching quite well and maintaining the, all the, all the teachings, that the, what teaching says, or what te teacher she or he is talking, talking kind of maintaining quite well and drawing the line up to the top of the, to the teaching is, then it's quite good teacher, quite good teacher, quite good teacher, and that is that. In you know, what the teaching said, for us, for example, for us, ordinary beings, when you see the ordinary, those good, good teachers, is so special. Through that ordinary special teacher, we can find the Bodhisattva teachers. We can find the Namakaya teachers. We can find the Sambhokaya teachers. Without the contract and the fourth teacher of that only good teacher, we were never going to get up there to be qualified to receive teaching. teaching. So therefore, when we improve ourselves with the only teacher, practice and meditate, and then the, all other teachers really will follow that. These are then fourth teachers, also in Ngohe Garbhatandra teaching, those are the six different teachers mentioned. Six different teachers. Teachers, those are what? general teachers, and one who is accurate in the path, teacher of the one who is accurate in the teachings, one who is energizing the teachings, teacher one who is energizing, one is always supporting the help to consulting and a kind of clarification and purification, all these things that teaches, and one is explaining the meaning of the tantras and the those pit instructions, and one who is giving the pit instructions. Those are the six different teachers, which is those all six that ordinary teachers, part of ordinary teachers. These six different teachers is where they explain the six different individuals, but it can be all can be in one individual too. All can represent that six different. So that teacher here, here teaching says that qualified teacher, you always have the devotions. Devotion and confidence and trust follow with that. If we find the qualified teacher, don't linger, don't doubt, don't hesitate, don't turn away. Turn away from the teacher. Stay with that. Ever you like to, ever you like to improve yourself through the teaching of the Buddha or through that teaching, is really good. Otherwise, we we making again missing the missing the our opportunities. And so that just that is one. So that means. <coughs> That always careful with our actions, cause and effects are inevitable. And the second is contract with the qualified teacher. That is, so among these like four uh, of the practitioners, I went maybe roughly one or two. First way is for keeping the like, uh, this is thoughtful with our actions, karma. That means simply always thought for with karma, always thought with actions. That pulls. And the second is then connect to the lineage, connect to the teacher. Keep that connection if you like to improve that path, you should connect. And keep the connection with the joy, with the respect, with the appreciation with the devotions. What in the teaching said in Goenga, but not the teaching said, those teachers, you should honor as like leader. You should honor as your uncle. You should honor their, uh, their as your father. You should honor as their, your mother. You should honor as the, your eye, eye. And you should honor their heart. See, that, those are really in the teaching said in Goenga, but then the, you should honor these teachers. That respect and honor. 
If you have that honor, what in the great teacher, Buddha Shakyamuni said in the Pandyaparama, the teaching. If you connect with that good teacher, qualified teacher, with joy and the devotion and learn and follow that, you will gain the same achievement, realization as that teacher has. Teach at that. So that's it. And therefore, then all the good qualities of the virtues will rush out from your hidden qualities. Come up all that. That is really teaching says. So that is my brief talk for today. And then again tomorrow we do continue. So we see how, how many we can go over this again as we go in this. And then, and I like to talk this uh, kind of completed this. He's on the Dunyan Vijay teaching, which is so special and important. Never you know already it's translated what it's saying. But again, to remind it to each other is about the kind of responsibility of a Sangha member. We all as a Sangha member and remind it to each other and kind of refreshing our own little bit of knowledge about the Buddha Dharma is really very good, good to all the time and it is also virtuous and therefore I'm doing this, I like to kind of complete this. So again, thank you very much for your participation and thank you again so much for everything. Okay. Thank you. Now we do, again, just uh, do the, our evening practice. If you have time, please join with us. We do the, our evening practice of the Bhimasamian Monastery that we will do. Together with that, we do that with practices also, like med meditation practice, to the healing practice. This time, again, there, this is, of course, in general, in the samsara days, we have all these troubles. Sickness trouble is one of the, our troubles in the samsara. But this time is kind of like very, <clears throat> kind of a little bit intensified like situation of this pandemic. So at least we can put our good intention, our good meditation as a Buddha taught. Taught in Guru Bhima taught is really good for, that's what we can do for, the, for, for these purposes. So in the what teaching said, do everything what you can do as your best capabilities. So pray is our best capability to do to the all these different situations and also then this must uh, this disease sicknesses. So if you have time please join us with us and thank you again.